Hello and welcome back to another video from Provail Tech. Today we are hopping into Data RMM, and specifically what we're looking at today is best practices for user offboarding within Data RMM. When you go ahead and log into your Data RMM portal, one of the first things you'll go ahead and notice is when you go to deactivate a user, you have multiple options for this. So in Data RMM, there are two options for revoking user access. The first is simply to deactivate the user. So typically this option is used when you're not expected to be needing access to it for an extended period of time. Uh, to show you kind of how that works here, if we go ahead and click on um, the, a user here, for instance, you will go ahead and see the user's status is active. Um, if we wanted to go ahead and disable it, we can set it to inactive here or on the other portal I'll show you. Um, but the other thing you want to go ahead and take a look at here is uh, the deactivation portion, which you can go ahead and schedule. So if you know exactly when you're going to you know, be needing to deactivate that account, you can go ahead and use that option pretty easily. Going back into here, when we uh, click on the name here, if you wanted to do it via this method, this is my account, so I can't deactivate my own account, but you would go ahead and click that option there on the deactivate button if you wanted to do that. One of the other helpful things you can take a look at here is you'll go ahead and see this says activity log. So if you go ahead and click on your account and click on the activity log, what you'll go ahead and see is all the activities for that account. So you can know exactly if that account was doing anything, um, if it's being used at all, kind of give you a good indication, um, you know, if it's safe to, uh, you know, actively either, either deactivate it or delete it. Um, so you can see on my account here, a couple actions um, already taken for the day there. Going back here, um, if we're not going to deactivate the user, the other option we have is to delete the user. So when deciding whether or not to delete a user, a uh, couple of things to consider here. Before deleting the user, any of their associated data must be reassigned to another user. So when you reassign the associated data to another user, you have to select another user from the portal there, and you have to ensure that the user you are selecting has the same required permissions to perform actions on the data being associated to them. Um, and that's that goes down to your to your level there. So if you have um, an account that requires a higher level permission and you're um, you know transferring it to a lower level, that will not work. It needs to match. The other thing to keep in mind is um, if at the time of deletion a Dato RMM user account is linked to an auto task profile, the link will be removed. So when you go ahead and uh, delete the user, the auto task can then link their profile to another Dato RMM user account. A couple of other things we want to take a look at here. Um, that covers mainly how to deactivate and delete the user, but there are a couple of other cleanups and best practices within that ORMM to make sure that everything is removed successfully. One of the things we want to take a look at are the global and site level emails. So if the user was set as a default global or a site email recipient, their email address must be manually removed. So if we go and hop into here into global settings, for instance, um, you can see any of the email recipients that you were to have in here. If that account were in here, you'd have to go and make sure you manually manually remove the account. Um, same thing when you go into sites. So if you had a site, for instance, and you had them set up as an email recipient on the site, you'd have to go ahead and remove them here as well couple other areas you would want to take a look at are for policies, for instance. So if we go and hop into monitoring and policies here, um, if you were to have a policy where we were to have a response, which is optional, um, one of the options is to send an email, though. Um, so if you were to have this email set up in here with the recipient of the account you're looking to either deactivate or delete, you would need to manually remove it on there as well. Um, so none of these are handled um, kind of automatically in the cleanup process. You have to go in there and, and manually remove the email address from all of those. The other thing you want to go and take a look at here is anytime you deactivate or delete a user, you will disable all automatic email sent from Datto to their email address that was listed under their RMM user account. So while the account uh, you know, will be disabled, um, you want to make sure that's in there as well. The other thing to take a look at here is you'll see if I go ahead and pull up my other account here, for instance, um, this is a, a Provel API account that we had created here. Um, as you can see, it has an API key in here as well. I went ahead and uh, screenshotted that out so you um, don't see it in there. But if you were to have an API key on your account, um, when the account is either deactivated or deleted, um, those API keys aren't um, you know, paused or anything like that. They are removed. Um, so any API keys that are attached to an inactive or deleted account will no longer function. And in order for your integrations to continue 
with RMM, you need to obtain new API keys for that user to replace the old keys. But other than that, that's pretty much what we have here for best practices in Dino RMM. If you need anything else, let us know. But thank you for watching. Thank you.